Hi everybody, my name is Chelsea and today we're going to be talking a bit about anger and I have a great book for you so let's begin. Our story today is called On's Anger. On was in the living room building a tower, the tallest tower he'd ever built. His grandfather was in the kitchen making dinner. On, grandfather called out, dinner is ready. On added a yellow block and smiled. The tower was almost as tall as he was. Now the red one, On whispered, placing a red block at the very top. Grandfather came in from the kitchen. What a wonderful tower. It's not done yet, An told him. Come sit down, Grandfather said. You can play more after we eat. He set the plates on the table and returned to An, who was balancing a green block on top of the red one. Put your blocks down now, said Grandfather. Dinner is getting cold. An wanted to keep playing. He opened his mouth to speak, but his bottom lip quivered, and the words didn't come out. An's eyes filled with tears, and he started to cry. Grandfather tried to put his arm around An, but An pushed him away, knocking the tower over and sending the blocks flying. Go away! I hate you! An shouted. You're upset, said Grandfather. Please go to your room and sit with your anger. I'll come in when you're calm and able to talk. On ran to his room and leapt onto his bed. His cries grew so strong he could feel them all the way down in his belly. How do I sit with my anger, he wondered. I'm so angry, 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 angry. Finally, said a voice. I was hoping you would notice me and lifted his head and came face to face with a hairy red creature. Who are you? asked On, and how did you get into my room? I'm your anger, said the creature. You brought me here. My anger? The anger nodded. Did Grandfather see you come in? I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. Don't worry, On. I'm not a stranger. I'm the part of you that comes out when things don't go your way. I'm right here every time you get angry. I know you feel scared when I'm around. I can make you cry and want to hit things. I can even make you say mean things to people you love. An's anger started to turn the knob of the bedroom door. Come on, he said, I'll show you. An was tempted, but Grandfather had said to stay in the room. Wait, An called. Maybe we can do something in here. An's anger turned and extended his hairy hand. I know just the thing, he said. An took his anger's hand, and together they danced all around the room. They raised their arms overhead and spun wide circles. They used their breath to make sounds like a strong howling wind. They got down on their knees and pounded the ground with their hands. It sounded like they were playing drums on the earth, and On liked that. Finally, they were exhausted and ready to be still. On and his anger sat together silently. They sat, they breathed in, they breathed out. And they sat some more. I don't like to say mean things to people, said On, but sometimes I can't help it. I can help you, said his anger. How can you help? I thought you were the one who was making me do these things in the first place. That's true, but I'm also your friend. Whenever you feel angry, you should come sit with me. After we spend some time together, you might feel better. Spending time with you is kind of fun, An said. Do you want to stay for dinner? I think I'll be gone before dinner, said his anger. Are you sure, said An, we're having ice cream for dessert? An's anger smiled, and An smiled back.
Alan was tired. He took a deep breath and let out a little sigh. And when he did, his anger became smaller. On and his anger continued to breathe together. With each in-breath, On's anger got a little bit smaller, and with each out-breath, On felt a little better. On heard a gentle tapping on his bedroom door. It was Grandfather. Grandfather and On sat together. I'm sorry I didn't listen, said On. I was really angry. I wanted to keep playing. Grandfather took On in his arms. Thank you for your kind words, he said. I sat with my anger like you asked, On said. But we didn't just sit, we danced and played too. Do you want to meet him? On looked up, but his anger was gone. Grandfather, said On. Do you know what happened? I think I do, said Grandfather. You took good care of your anger and it went away. That's right, said On. How did you know? When I was a little boy, I met with my anger too. Really? Was it because of blocks? No, laughed Grandfather. There were no blocks, just frogs, a lily pond, and a sun that wouldn't set. Come, let's eat dinner, and I'll tell you my story. And that's the end of our story today. So I have a few questions for you. And if you're watching this with your family, maybe you want to listen to the question and then pause the video so that you're able to talk about the answer to the question and see how your family thinks about these questions also. What made on angry? Do you remember? What does his anger monster look like? What would yours look like? If you want, you can draw a picture of your anger. What size is the anger monster at first? And how about toward the end of the story? What does On do to calm his anger monster down? At the end of the story, our anger monster has turned into a what? And what does this tell us about our anger? So now that we've talked a little bit about anger, I'd like for us to think a bit about forgiveness. Sometimes when we're sick, we take medicine that helps us feel better. When we're angry, we can use the medicine of meditation to help calm ourselves and bring peace to our hearts. What might be some other strategies to use for our anger? For me, I really like going for a walk. Or maybe you can draw a picture or maybe just sitting in your room for a while. I also like to dance. That helps get my anger out if I put on some good music and I start dancing around. In addition to all of these strategies, there's a special meditation called forgiveness meditation. What does it mean to forgive somebody? How do you forgive a friend if they hurt you? Very often when we hurt someone, like we said something mean or took away a friend's toy, we feel really bad and we want to say we're sorry. And sometimes even after we say we're sorry, we still feel bad. Forgiveness meditation helps us to let go of our anger and find a way to apologize sincerely. And sometimes a friend, a brother or sister might do something that hurts us. Now offering forgiveness doesn't mean that it's okay for that person to punch or take away one of your treasured things, but forgiveness meditation can help us calm ourselves down and help us get ready to talk to our friend or sibling or maybe even a parent and tell them how we feel in a gentler way. So we're going to practice a forgiveness meditation today, all right? So get yourself settled into a spot that feels good and comfortable. Maybe it's a chair, maybe it's on the ground. And we're going to ring our bell. 
And when the sound of the bell calms down, then we'll begin. All right, are you settled? Here we go. Settle into a comfortable seated spot or laying down and close your eyes. Take a deep breath in and slowly exhale, relaxing your body. Now think of someone that you might have hurt. Maybe you took something from them without asking. Maybe you got mad. Maybe you told them something that wasn't true. Now say inside your mind quietly and sincerely, if I have hurt you, I ask your forgiveness. And again, say to yourself, I ask your forgiveness. And a third time, say to yourself, I ask your forgiveness. Now keep imagining that person and give them a smile. You can even smile yourself if you want. And next, think of someone who might have hurt you. Maybe they got mad at you and said something mean. Maybe they ignored you when you needed them. Maybe you wanted something from them, but they wouldn't give it to you. Now say inside your mind, if you have hurt or harmed me, I forgive you. And again, say to yourself, I forgive you. And a third time say to yourself, I forgive you. Imagine giving that person a warm smile, and if you want, you can actually smile too. And finally, appreciate yourself for offering forgiveness. It takes a brave and compassionate person to forgive. You can also repeat the words, I forgive myself. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. And with that, we'll ring our bell again. Can wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, open your eyes back up and come back to this room. And I'm very glad that you were able to join me today to talk a bit about anger and also forgiveness because both are a part of you and both are important. Really, anger is not a bad thing. We just need to learn what we do with it. And you can make really good choices. I know you can. So the next time that you feel some of those icky feelings, instead of acting right away, maybe just sit with your anger for a while. And hopefully you can come to some forgiveness, whether that's for somebody else, or if that's asking forgiveness for yourself. Thank you for joining me today. Have a good day. Bye everyone.